Get your popcorn, fellas, because the show is about to begin. Farina, the Hydro Archon, after months of waiting, has finally graced us with her presence in Genshin Impact. She's in the game. You, you can pull for her now. Farina has to be one of the most unique characters the game has ever seen, so get to your seats or dim in the lights. In this video, I'm breaking down all the details of Farina's very intricate kit with tips and details that you are going to need to know to master her, along with her best artifacts, weapons, team comps, and constellations, you name it. Let the show begin. To get things started throughout this whole vid, unless otherwise specified, my Farina is at level 90, holding her signature weapon, Splendor of Tranquil Waters, with talent levels 888, holding four-piece golden troop. Farina is not a straightforward character. She does things in Genshin that we have never seen before. So to utilize her to the fullest, she is going to take a lot of time to master, and I'm going to try my best to explain everything in this video in an easy to understand way. Act one begins with her charge attack. As you can see, Farina starts in her black dress and short haired look and is aligned with Us but with her charge attack, she deals physical damage and quick changes in a ball of light into her white dress long haired fit, changing her alignment to Numa. So just remember, black dress Usia is her default, so she'll always start like this in game modes like Abyss. Now we should talk about her skill, which summons cute, bubbly guests to join the party. In black dress form is the skill that her entire character design functions around, so listen up. She summons her three friends, Jean Tohom, Usher, Surintendant, Chef Omarin, and Mademoiselle Cabaretta. Yeah, she's not extra at all. These three bubble buddies wreak havoc upon Tevat, firing off hydro attacks at nearby enemies, feeding off the souls of your entire team to fuel their bloodshed. Sorry, got a little swept up there. Yes, they drain your party members' health so long as they are attacking a target and their damage scales off Farina's max HP. For each party member who's above 50% HP, their damage is increased by 10%. So if your entire party is above 50%, they do 140% of their original damage. And they'll stop draining a party member's health once they go below 50%. Like I said, these little guys are what make Farina, Farina. But she has another form of her skill. In white dress Numa form, she summons the Singer of Many Waters, who's a lame pacifist who heals the active party member in intervals based on Farina's max HP. Her skill lasts a massive 30 seconds. And if she changes forms while her guests are summoned, they will swap with one another, but share the same 30 second duration. All right, so her charge attack swaps her form and her skill either summons a trio of water death animals or a kind seahorse. But now Farina's burst. It costs 60 energy, deals AoE hydro damage on cast based on Farina's max HP, and causes the whole team to enter the universal revelry state, which lasts 18 seconds. In this state, Farina gains one fanfare point or stack for every percentage change in HP of the entire team. That's raising or lowering of HP. Let me break it down this way. If we let these little sea demons munch away at us with no healing whatsoever, they would eat the whole party down to 50% and then stop. Since every team member lost 50% of their health, 50 times four is 200, Farina would gain 200 fanfare stacks. But if we had Gene heal us back to full, that's another swing of 50% times four, another 200 stacks. But at C0, she has a max of 300 stacks. But what do fanfare stacks even do? For every stack, they grant a damage percent increase to the entire team and raise the incoming healing bonus of everyone on the team. At talent level eight and 300 fanfare stacks, this is a 63% damage increase to all party members. You have to realize just how insane this is this is damage bonus percent for the whole team not an attack percent bonus not a hydro damage percent bonus just straight up damage bonus the implications of this are insane we'll go into them all throughout the guide but this along with farina's skill are what shape her as a character let me finish her normal attacks just to be concise they are slow physical damage hits but they look beautiful and have the unique property of occasionally firing an arc aligned spirit thorn that deals hydro damage but this damage is super low we're not going to be using it for damage her first passive endless waltz pretty much reads as this if a character besides farina overheals a party member they'll heal for an additional two percent of their max hp three times within four seconds this results in a small amount of healing, 6% max HP to be exact, and a little more HP fluctuation for fanfare stacks, but nothing crazy. And her second passive, Unheard Confession. For every 1,000 points of max HP Farina has, her summons get a buff. The murder leeches get a damage increase of 0.7%, up to a max of 28%, and the Gentle Soul Seahorse will heal at an increased rate 0.4% of every 1,000 HP up to 16% faster. Both of these will get the max effect at 40,000 HP plus. So hitting this with Farina is ideal. She wants HP anyway, so sounds like free bonuses to me. And her out of combat talent shortens the cooldown of the underwater animal powers by 30%. For talent priority, I would recommend both her skill and burst in tandem. They are both extremely important to her kit. Her skill is her personal damage, while the burst is her team's damage and more healing bonus. So choose which one you personally want to prioritize. I recommend her burst. And you can leave her normal attack 
Artifact Talent at level one. It's not gonna be useful until Constellation 6. And that is our Hydro Archon's kit in its entirety. It's as elaborate as her persona. So here are some not so obvious details about Farina's kit that you're gonna need to know if you wanna make her the star of the show. First off, the murderers will follow around the active character, which is a good thing, I guess. But the seahorse is tired from how much they give, so they don't move. Next, her skill will tick you below 50% HP on your character. So it's technically more than 200 stacks going from 100 to quote unquote 50%. And remember, if they don't have a target to attack, you won't lose HP anymore. Now, Farina's skill generates one hydro energy particle every two to three seconds or so, but Farina Farina is a character who, contrary to her canonical self, spends most of her time off stage, so she won't be the one directly receiving the hydro particles most of the time. Because of this, Farina has some pretty high energy recharge requirements. She's gonna need her burst up at all times if we're gonna let these little fuckers fucking eat our her energy requirements will change with every team, but the biggest factor is how many other Hydro characters you have on the team and how many teammates are holding the best set of weapons in the game, Fav weapons. A character gains more energy from a particle of their corresponding element on or off field. So with two to three other Hydro teammates and a Fav in there, you may only need like 110% ER. But with only one Hydro teammate, it might be between 130% ER to almost 170% ER, depending on Fav and Hydro particle funneling. And if Farina is the only Hydro character on a team and no one is running fav i am not exaggerating when i say she needs like 200 percent energy recharge or more this is a massive range so i'll give some estimates in the team comp section but just remember the less hydro characters you have on her team or a lack of fav weapons the more er she'll need finally two big things about her burst you won't gain fanfare stacks until after you use her burst so you're not going to want a skill unless you can immediately burst right after in a lot of cases she also loses all fanfare stacks when her burst ends and the other thing is some advanced tech. Your first Farina burst is going to occur when your characters are at full HP, so it's going to be almost impossible to hit max fanfare stacks on her first burst. But on her second burst, if you're playing optimally, you would use Farina's skill and burst with the team at 50% HP. Switch to a healer that max heals the whole team for an instant 200 stacks while these termites help you get the rest by draining you after. So all these reasons above are why I say she's a very complicated character. There are going to be some growing pains getting used to her playstyle for sure but I think once we get a hang of it and master her, it is going to feel extremely rewarding. By the way, if you want to watch me embarrass myself playing Farina, I stream all the time on Twitch. Come drop a follow and say hi to your boy. It's the best Genshin stream on the planet. No cap. And homies, look, if you enjoy this kind of content or any of the other vids that I work super hard to make, subscribe to the channel. I'm still trying to hit that 50k goal by the end of the year. It would be an absolute dream come true. I promise you won't regret it. All right, after a lengthy section of her entire kit, let's move to a shorter section, her artifact sets. Farina's best artifact set, no questions asked, is Golden Troop. All of Farina's personal damage is from them. And with them on the field for 30 seconds, potentially, they will eat enemies alive. So a set that boosts skill damage to an insane amount like Golden Troop is an absolute no-brainer. But if you haven't farmed Golden Troop yet, come on, man, what are you doing? Tenacity of the Millith is probably her second best four-piece set if you're using attack scaling allies. The HP two-piece boosts her damage and the passive will always be up for the on-field character. And after that, you pretty much just have two pieces, which in most cases will do more damage than Tenacity, just less support for the team. Any combination of two-piece Golden Troop, Hydro damage, or HP percent will be great, but Four piece golden troop is her best by far. Now I said the artifact set part would be short. Time for the bonus section, what artifact stats she wants. So oddly enough, because of just how massive her damage percent increase is from her burst, she actually wants to run an HP goblet most of the time. Long story short, damage percent and hydro percent are in the same part of the Genshin damage formula and too much here causes diminishing returns. So actually raising her HP higher, a different variable in the equation is more optimal. Let's put it like this, a typical build will run HP percent sands, HP percent goblet, and a crit or crit damage circlet. But if you desperately need ER, like we talked about earlier, ER HP crit is great. If you're running a weapon that gives a ton of HP percent, a hydro damage goblet becomes about just as good. And if you don't have an HP goblet leveled up because you've been throwing them out, don't worry guys, a hydro damage goblet works great. So I just mentioned that with Farina's insane damage percent increase, an HP goblet actually becomes her best. And crazily enough, in a lot of cases, this is true as well for her teammates. Such as Nuvalet running HP, HP crit, or Hu Tao running EM, HP crit, or even Yoimiya going attack, attack, crit, you get my point. 
Her damage percent that she grants everyone is once again in the same part of the formula as elemental damage. So it replaces, air quotes, pyro damage percent or hydro damage percent, etc. It all depends on the team and characters though. It honestly gets complicated, so you can just stick to your normal goblets if you'd like, but this just goes to show how insane Farina's damage buff really is. For substats, in order of importance, she wants crit stats to raise her personal damage, which is quite high, energy recharge rolls to make sure she has her burst up every rotation, and of course, everything she does scales off of HP percent, so we want that too. Getting into Farina's weapons, I'll spoil it right now. She has a ton of strong free-to-play options, so do not fret, my broke gamers. Coming at a massive shock to everyone, her signature weapon is good on her. It grants her a bunch of crit damage, skill damage percent, and HP percent, so she'll be doing a ton of damage with this, but it doesn't give you any energy recharge whatsoever zero so if you decide to pull for this weapon you really have to invest in her er with amazing sub rolls or most likely even an er sans on low hydro teammate teams she has two other bang and five star options in key of kasha suit and jade cutter jade cutter is a stat stick it grants hp percent and crit rate the attack passive is useless but the more interesting one is key key grants a ton of hp percent making a hydro goblet more worth it and for reaction based teams grants a ton of elemental mastery to teammates making everyone hit hard but key is not amazing on mono hydro teams for example and again requires a lot of energy recharge to justify running miss splitter is probably her best five star stat stick after these but it's probably better utilized on someone else like bennett now this is where things get juicy for the players who have been loyal to genshin from the very beginning you have been rewarded festering desire is absolutely cracked on her an elemental skill damage buff, skill crit rate buff, and 45% energy recharge. It's crazy how a weapon created three years ago feels like it was made for her. Seriously, if you have this, use it. But worry not, if you don't have Festering, you are in luck. The brand new Fluv Sandra Ferryman is super strong on Farina too. She gets bonus crit and a ton of energy recharge, which I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but she needs a lot of it most of the time. Awesome option, free to play or not. It can't be an Eeks video without mentioning Fav. So look, Favonius for her on teams where she's going to need a ton of ER is amazing. But to be honest, I'd rather try to run a sword that boosts her personal damage more and still has ER like Ferryman or Festering while using artifacts with strong ER subs or even an ER sans. But maybe you just need a ton of ER, Fav will save your life. The new battle pass sword Wolf Fang does a lot for her personal damage too, but once again, you'll need ER. And Sapwood is good as it gives ER, gives EM to the ally who picks up the leaf and is free to play craftable. It's not elite status, but still very usable. So right before we go into some team comps, let me break down what the average Farina rotation is going to look like. Usually you'll want to drop your skill and then immediately burst. This will make sure Farina picks up one of the hydro particles generated from her skill before leaving the field. So the war criminals are out, dealing damage, applying hydro, and draining your team's HP, while Farina's burst is up, generating fanfare stacks. This is when you switch to your teammates of choice and go nuts. Her burst lasts for 18 seconds while her skill lasts 30, but has a cooldown of 20 seconds. So if your energy is good to go, she should be able to come back in when it ends refresh her skill and burst again and this time your team is almost definitely not going to be at full health because of you know who so it'll result in more fanfare stacks from the get-go and more damage with that out of the way look i know i've been joking about them a lot but i am not kidding for you to run a farina team you need a healer everything about her kit involves the entire team's hp going down and then back up and if you can't get it back up she's gonna be disappointed. So characters that don't heal the entire team either immediately or in solid chunks are going to have a rough time and in some cases just straight up won't be enough. So these healers right here are not really going to be enough. Not to say you can't use these characters on a Farina team, I'm just saying they won't provide enough healing to be the only healer on the squad. Now these healers can be really good, but might be harder to use one way or another. Noelle is amazing for healing the whole team, but she needs to be on field. So Noelle teams with Farina are real and can hurt you. Barbara's only downside is she needs her burst to operate with Farina, but it costs 80 energy and she doesn't generate much energy at all. No, her skill is not going to be enough healing. Chi Chi is good and heals characters off field a little as well, but mostly heals the on-field character. Sayu is also good, but her instant heal isn't massive and her burst passive heal is a good bit better at C6. And the god himself, Bennett, finds himself here. Bennett heals are great, but it's only to the on-field character and won't heal the character after they're above 70%. Bennett rotations are going to be awkward to keep the whole team healed. It's possible, but difficult. But now these characters are the absolute best Farina teammates with how they can heal the whole team. All of these characters either provide a massive burst of HP in 
instantly heal the whole party over time or a combination of the two. Yep, who'd have thought Mika would be getting a massive buff? It couldn't have been me. I'll just quickly talk about Kokomi. Yes, she requires on field time to heal like Chi Chi or Noelle, but Kokomi being a Hydro Catalyst is just a better character to have on your team overall. And she can drop the Jellyfish for big heals for the active character too. And with all of that, it's team time. This will not be an exhaustive list because Farina teams have endless possibilities. When your burst raises the whole team's damage bonus percent by a ton, pretty much anybody can work with her. Let's not forget Maris Chaussi Hunter. Farina has made it a viable choice for a ton of damage dealers on her teams. And get creative. If you don't have the healer I mention or recommend in these teams, swap to another one and give it a try. Let's start with Vaporize stuff. A team like Hutao Vape will be bumping out a ton of damage, but needs a second Hydro like Xing Cho or Yelon to consistently vape Hutao's charge attacks. And of course, you're gonna need a big healer. I think Jean works best, but it's flexible. I am happy to say Yoimiya is going to do some insane damage numbers with Farina too. And believe it or not, Farina's Hydro alone actually works well to vape most of Yoimiya's attacks. But you can also elect to run double Hydro for even more consistent vapes. You'll just have to give up on Bennett and Yujin since you're gonna need a big healer. Unfortunately, Bennett and Jean together will cause a lot of pyro swirls from your active character, ruining Yoimiya's vapes. Bennett's Sayu could work, but also swirls pyro too. Freeze teams work with Farina as well. There are a lot of different options that work for Ayaka, but her highest damage team will be the Farina Shen Ha team or the original original Kazuha Kokumi Shenha team. You can also run a Rizli Freeze team as you will. He will love the damage percent. Let's talk about all the Dendro reaction teams, starting with Hyper Bloom. So Farina can absolutely be used on Hyper Bloom and Quick Bloom teams, no doubt. But the reason I don't think they utilize Farina's kit to the fullest is because Hyper Bloom is a transformative reaction. This means Hyper Bloom doesn't get the damage percent buff from Farina's burst. Plus, the queen of Hyper Bloom, Kuki, isn't enough healing to be run with Farina alone. So on a team like this, the only character Characters benefiting from her buff are Farina and Xing Cho, who does great damage, but not hyper carry levels of damage. But a quick bloom team like Farina, I'll hide them, Kuki, and Yao Yao is more promising. I'll hide them dishes out a ton of damage by himself, and with Farina being the only hydro, you'll have less seeds, but more quick and uptime, synergizing better with Farina's damage bonus, in my opinion. So, yes, these teams will destroy content and Genshin just by nature of Hyper Bloom being cracked, but I don't think they're some of Farina's coolest teams since you're forced to slot in a big healer. I won't go too deep into these teams, but I think for the same reasons as above, but to an even higher degree are Nilu Bloom and Burgeon. You can use her on teams like this, but they aren't playing to her strengths as much as other teams. Now, Mono Hydro gets a massive buff with Farina, and it is not a joke at all. You can run tons of different combinations on Mono Hydro, but just know Kokomi is the premier healer and driver here, with Yelon and Xing Cho dealing tons of damage. In a crazy turn of events, Noel driving Mono Hydro is really good. On field DPS Noel to keep the team healthy while dishing out damage herself while driving Xing Cho and Yelon's crazy damage too. I'd say this is a good time to go into Nouvellette. And yes, he loves teaming up with Farina. As if this guy needed a buff to his damage. Farina's burst makes him almost as violent as Mademoiselle Krabaletta. While he does drain his own HP while attacking as well, he can run Prototype Amber and still do crazy damage. So with Prototype Amber in the mix, Nouvellet teams can pull off comps with some weaker Farina healers like Kuki. So Nouvellet Hyper Bloom with Kuki is alive and well, as well as pretty much every standard Nouvellet Hydro team we've seen thus far. Slotting on Jean, Baiju, or Mika for heals will let Farina and Nuv go to town. Now because of just how massive her damage percent buff is, she's gonna be ran on teams that don't even want Hydro React. Let's start with Noelle and Mono Geo. Noelle being able to carry the whole team on her back with her heals while swinging damage boosted Geo Swords of Death with a sub DPS Albedo also benefiting from the buff and Goro boosting damage further. You can even go Shincho or Yelon instead of Goro, up to you. But elements like Geo love Farina since they don't traditionally have huge ways to boost the damage percent. And the other element with that issue, Animo. The biggest winner here is Wanderer. Now this team is about to make some waves, so congratulations to all my Wanderer mains out there. Farina boosting Wanderer's damage by an insane amount. Faruzan boosting it even higher, and Mika full healing the team while granting Wanderer bonus attack speed. While this team may not have resistance to interruption, frozen enemies can attack, making this team even better. And have I mentioned Mara Chausi Hunter Wanderer? You gotta be careful not to get hit with this team since Wanderer getting hit in the air is big oof, but this might just be a kill or be killed playstyle. And that is a big handful of Farina teams to go out and give a try. I think all of these teams are going to be some of her most meta options 
but this isn't all of them. Like I said, her possibilities seem endless. She synergizes with most characters in the game by sheer damage buffing. Not to mention all the future Fontaine characters that I'm sure she's gonna synergize with too. Maybe Navia and Chevreuse. Did you guys see Chevreuse? She looks so cool. Anywho, there are tons of Farina teams. Drop your favorites down below for some of the ones I missed. Now for the people buying the front row Broadway seats to Farina's performance, let's talk about and rate all of Farina's constellations. Keep in mind, I don't have them on lock, so this is purely my opinion upon reading them and researching them further. With her C1, yes, I'm not gonna read all these names, all right, she immediately gains 150 fanfare points, which was half her original max, but this constellation also increases your max stacks to 400. This constellation raises how fast she gets to the higher damage percent increases and its ceiling. These are two very strong effects, but you're still gonna a healer on the team for hp reasons and usually you generate stacks really fast with said healer anyway i'd give this a 3.5 rating her c2 when her burst is active she gains 250 percent more fanfare stacks than normal and each point above max fanfare stacks now increases farina's max hp up to 140 percent now this is pretty crazy with her c1's effect and a 250 percent increase in fanfare generation she's gonna hit max stacks and go past this very frequently with her personal damage benefiting a ton from this hp buff this con is super good but it's not a game breaker i give it a really strong four c3 raises her burst talent level by three which means it increases the team's healing bonus but more importantly the maximum damage percent increase she grants this is really really strong i give this a four out of five as well C4 grants Farina four energy when the salon members attack or the singer of many waters heals once every five seconds. Depending on how the times add up, this gives Farina 20 to 24 energy per skill cast. That is a third of her burst energy recovered at minimum without teammates or her natural energy particles included. This really frees up her build and makes her feel a lot more consistent, giving it a four. C5 is her skill talent level up three. It's more personal damage and heals. It's all right. Two. Now, Farina's C6. This completely changes her play style, and I don't have practical experience with this in terms of team comps, but let me break it down. After using her skill, she gains Hydro Infusion on her normals for 10 seconds, and their damage is increased by 18% of her max HP. When those normals hit enemies in Usia form, so when the adorable little sadists are out, Farina heals the team by 4% of her max HP three times. And in Numa form, so Oceanid Healer, yes, it's not a seahorse, it's an Oceanid, I'm sorry, her damage is increased by a further 25% of her HP. And when attacks hit enemies, causes all teammates to lose 1% of their HP. What an insane constellation. The Singer of Many Waters now drains HP and heals, and so does the Usia version. So the possibilities really open up with this. It's really hard for me to say just how good this is as it completely changes Farina's playstyle from the one I talked about in this video, but I'm sure it is super fun and makes Farina into an absolute killer. Like most C6s, we gotta give this five. So what do I honestly think about Farina? I think she's scary. She does something in Genshin that is completely foreign to everyone who's ever played Genshin up to this day. She drains your entire team's HP to get her kit to work. I think making her kit work is not going to be easy at first, and it's gonna be really frustrating at times. But I really do believe that once you've mastered your kit, she is going to be an absolute game altering character. The party wide damage percent she gives is insane. And the ability to activate Mara Shousey Hunter or any other HP set we may get in the future is just crazy. Farina has 100% left her mark on Genshin as one of the most unique characters we have ever seen. And with that, the curtain closes on my full Farina guide. Before you go, check if you are subbed to the channel. I'm trying to hit 50K subs by the end of the year. It would be an absolute dream come true. So hey, do your boy a favor. And I stream all the time on Twitch. Come check out the live stream, homies. It's always a great time. I would love to see you there. And big shout outs to the patrons, Zik, Sumi, Caldo, Ken, Cloudy, everyone else over there. I appreciate you guys oh so very much. See you in the next video. Peace, guys.